come together. Can we get some examples of people? Think about choices that you make. Um, can we start with you, Dash? Is that okay? Food choices, thank you. Okay, what am I going to eat? Um, another daily one? Clothing. Uh, what do I wear? Okay, Ricky? Sleep. Okay, sleepy. Black, black, black. When you sleep. Okay, okay. 6 p.m. or like 1 a.m. Time for sleeping, good. Uh, sorry. We'll pick somewhere in between. Sleep time. Good. Morning. Sleep time. Can someone give me one more? A daily decision. Daily. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, to toothpaste flavor. Um, sure, why not? Okay. I'm very boring. I only ever have one flavor of toothpaste open at a time. So this is like not a, not a choice I have to make. But, you know, I suppose if you're... Actually, I remember when I was growing up, I suppose this is an eating thing, we used to have, we used to routinely have like eight or nine different boxes of cereal always open at a time, and it drove my mum nuts. She's like, why don't you just eat one cereal and then finish it and then go on to the next one? And I was like, but mum, you get bored, you know, I want some variety. Um, so anyway, I mean, yeah, maybe you're like that with toothpaste, who knows? Okay, there are some daily decisions. Good, thanks. Um, how about... Decisions you make on a week-to-week -week basis, right? Well, what kinds of choices do you have? Um, Thoughts? Where, where should I go by the week shopping? Uh, okay, okay, so, um, so the location of your shopping, like grocery shopping, I take it that's something we don't do, well, most of us don't do every single day. Very inefficient, okay, so that's a good one. Yeah, another one? What you buy when you go shopping? Uh, okay, good. So um, the items that you get. So this is about location and about what you actually purchase. Okay, can we have another one on a weekly basis? Connie, did you think of one on a week-to-week -week basis? Week weekly one's a bit trickier. Anyone else want to? You've got one. Um, which, should I come to IPC morning Oh, ouch. <laughs> That's not a choice. That's a, okay. Should I, should I wake up and drag myself to 8 a.m. class? Okay. Any others? Any others? Things you don't do so frequently, so therefore they're, maybe they're a little more important. Yeah, one more. Yeah, I don't know if I should put that down. This is, okay, so attendance. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave that one off. Okay. Maybe that's not weekly, that's, anyway. Okay, so there's, there's some choices you have to make. Let's think on um, larger time scales, okay? So what's something that you only do once a year? Once a year. There aren't that many things, I suppose. But what kinds of choices do you have to make? What? Ah, good. Gifts. I, I am really bad with gifts. I hate um, that we have this annual cycle on which you have to get people gifts. Like, I'm not against gifts themselves, but like, the fact that, you know, it rolls around to Christmas, you're like, I am horribly obliged to, to get your gift, even though you don't need anything and you don't want anything anyway. Okay, that's a good one, right? Another one. Another one. What else do we do from year to year? Hmm. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So these are sort of like things that, yeah, okay, whether you should do April Fool's or Christmas or Easter or that kind of thing. So these are things which turn on on the calendar, right? Yeah, good. And medical checkups. Medical checkups, that's a good one. Now, um, let's just go on that a little more. What kind of decisions would you have to make about a medical checkup? Um, yeah, good. So you got all these different ones, whether you should go to them or not, um, who you should go to, whether you should get a second opinion, and so on. Yeah, one more. Uh, okay, so, yeah, all right. Again, like, these are the choices you guys get to make. They're voluntary, all right? Now, let's have a think about the really fun one. What are things that you only have to choose once ever? Pro probably, maybe twice. Uh, yeah. To be a doctor or a lawyer. Okay, career. Because <laughs> doctor or lawyer are your only two options, right? Okay. Or a teacher. No, Korea. Professor. Korea. That's a good. That's a good one. Give me some other ones. Give me some other ones. What other kinds of choices do we make? Hmm. Mm. Yeah, Jack. Say it again. Ah. Okay. Marital status. Maybe. Actually, it's kind of funny. Like, just when you think about it. E 
and now it's a bit of a skewed image, but more or less all of you, even the weirdest people of you, will probably get married because the weird people will find each other. Anyway, um, to marital status, so who you're gonna, whether you should marry, who you're gonna marry, when you're gonna marry, that's actually a big one, I think. Um, so like, who, who, or whether, and when, and so on. Okay. Yep. Retire. What about retirement? Like when you retire. Okay, so again, job, job sort of related things. Okay. Uh, retirement, you could say, should I go for a promotion? Right? Or well, maybe you hope that's not a once in a lifetime thing. <laughs> maybe you hope that's going to happen to you multiple times. Okay. Um, perhaps where you live, right? Where are you going to set up your home? Okay. Uh, along the lines of career, just pedaling back a few years before that, um, where are you going to go to study, right? Or what will you study? Okay. Will you go to Sydney or New South? Okay, or those kinds of decisions. Okay, or Mac, or Monash, or ANU, or all the other multiple good options. They're all fine. I'm not biased in any way. Sydney's the best university. Anyway. There we go, okay. So there, there's a whole set of decisions, okay? Now, what I want to get at is, particularly as you go sort of up the scale, larger in time, right? Uh, just Even just as individuals, right? These decisions get harder and harder to make. Like, well, maybe you think this is a really hard, like, oh, what should I choose? Actually, that's true. When I'm on playground duty and I see people at the canteen, they're like, it's life and death, whether I get a sausage roll or sushi. But anyway, as you go further along, right, these decisions have higher stakes and you want to make good decisions, right? And when you think this is all mostly individual based, right, because you're all thinking about yourselves as individuals, what if you're an organization like a government or a company or a hospital or a school, all those kinds of things? All these decisions suddenly increase in scale because they matter, they affect other people, right? Yeah. How much does that yeah, exactly. Like, there's a whole... When you think about, say, government, right? There are all these different kinds of decisions which we don't even have to worry about, generally, okay? Which, a lot of time and effort and money goes into making those choices, okay? So, that leads us into what we're actually covering today. This is the, um, your last topic for this HSC course. Ah, almost there, okay? Um, and the, the name of the topic is Decision support systems, okay, decision support systems. Now this is one of the cases where um, the people who make up names have done your favor and decision support systems sounds like exactly what it is. What do you think it sounds like? It's a system that supports, helps, facilitates, um, provides guidance in you making decisions, okay? So there was my start of a definition. Let me, let me get that down. A DSS. Okay. It's a system. And it supports your decision making process. Okay? It supports your decision making process. So I add the T. Now, that's really important that we say it's um, supporting, because the idea is not that it replaces you, generally speaking, right? It's about providing extra help. Um, it's, it's still humans making decisions, really, okay? So even though we'll look at some systems um, shortly, which seem completely autonomous, okay? Uh, humans are still the ones calling the shots, okay? We're still not really, I mean, we're, we're gonna talk about artificial intelligence uh, as we progress through this topic, right? But we still have um, humans, by and large, calling the shots and turning things on and off and making decisions about whether they should agree with the DSS or not. Okay? So this is what a decision support system basically is. And when you think about it, you actually use decision support systems all the time. Okay? Um, let's think about really, really low-tech ones, right? Because we, th we like to think about manual stuff before we think about electronic stuff. What you eat, what you eat, how do you make that decision? How do you choose? What kinds of um, information and uh, data do you use to make that decision? Yeah. Uh, okay, so what time is it? So, you know, you have to think about, is it breakfast, is it lunch, brunch, whatever. Okay, yeah, another one? Uh, olfactory and uh, 
Google. Yeah, okay, so you get Google Nose beta out or whatever, you smell it, okay? So you got all this information uh, passing into you. In terms of like concrete details and stuff though, if you're like, uh, maybe maybe you guys, because you're young, don't have to worry about it that much. But we, we think about nutrition, right? And we have systems. <laughs> sorry, we think. Some people out there, maybe not you, think about nutrition, okay? Count your calories, whatever, okay? And so we have decision support systems designed to help people make choices about what they should eat based on um, what nutrition it has in it, right? So we already use systems like this on a very sort of low, uh, mundane scale. Okay.